You're listening to the Chat City Interviews on 103.2 Preston FM. Let's set the scene. He was standing over a bed with a child asleep in it. He held the gun to her temple, feeling the softness of the skin there through the metal, as though the weapon were an extension of his hand. There was no choice with this one. There had been no choice before. Ah, The Dynamite Room is a book by Jason Hewitt, and you can find out more about the Dynamite Room and about the author, Jason Hewitt. And uh, to tell us how you can find out, it's nice to welcome my guest into the studio, Jay Cope. So, uh, Jake, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Lovely to meet you. And uh, I believe that uh, you're a reading development manager with one of the largest library authorities in the United Kingdom. Um, I used to be, yes. I've ah. now gone freelance. Um, ah. But yes, I used to be reading development manager for Lancashire. And and one of the things that you, you did do then, is that right, or still do, coordinated the Lancashire Book of the Year Award? Yes, I, I did that for around about 10 years. Um, I'm, I'm still involved with it, but not, not on the management side of it anymore. Ah, right. So just before we move on then to uh, the Dynamite Room, tell us just a little about then the Lancashire Book of the Year, because that sounds really interesting. What is that about? Yeah, the Lancashire Book of the Year is a fascinating project. It's basically... The children's book world is very much determined what they read by adults and the Lancashire Children's Book of the Year Award was one of the first awards where children themselves got to choose the books that they enjoyed reading. They chose the shortlist and they get to choose the overall winner each year. So it's really about giving them a voice, allowing them to talk about the books that they enjoy, the books that they love, the stories that they that they feel mean something to them. Ah, right. And it it does say, or the information I've got is that you are a passionate champion of children's reading and literature. Yes, that's right. Um, I've been very involved with the children's book world for quite a while. I've um, hosted events at Hay Festival, Edinburgh Festival, um, been involved in judging numerous book awards, including the Blue Peter Book Awards. So I like to get very involved. So how, how did all this begin then? Um, I've always enjoyed reading. I enjoyed stories. I think stories can take you to all kinds of different places. They can take you back in time. They allow you insight into how people think and feel. Um, And I studied literature at university and I really felt as much as I enjoyed that, it was important to be connecting with actual people and not just looking at the theory of it. So I wanted to find a job that allowed me to promote books and reading and stories. All oh, right. Uh, it's not often I, of course, listen to any other radio station other than Preston FM, but I, I've got to admit, a few weeks ago I was listening to uh, Radio 4 on Saturday morning, and the discussion was about people who were in the studio were talking about the children who were roughly 14 years of age and the fact that they had uh, a book block and they couldn't persuade them to read books. And uh, they were asking the people around the table in the studio what book would they choose to try and get their child to read that book? If you'd have been one of the panellists, what book would you choose for young people to read that you think would enthuse them into reading? It's a really difficult question, always choosing just one book. If you if you speak to anyone who loves reading, it's one of the hardest things to answer. Um, I think for me it would probably be Philip Ridley's Mighty Fizz Chiller, which is all about the power of stories and the way that stories affect our lives. And it's about a young boy called Milo Kick. And he gradually comes to realise how the stories that he's being told by the people around him have kind of influenced who he is and who he can be. Right. Yeah, I could I could see that being quite a fascinating book. And what about your own personal choices? I mean, what are you reading at the moment? I've just finished reading or rereading Stephen Fry's Moab is My Washpot, which was the story of his childhood Um And he had a very interesting, fascinating life, actually, um, whereby he had quite a criminal background, actually, and got into all (laughs) kinds of hijinks. And it tells the story of how he gradually came to turn his life around. So really quite an inspiring, life-affirming story. Right. And uh, just then moving on then to Jason Hewitt, author and playwright, The the Dynamite Room. Um, People can find out or hear more about the book and questions from the uh, author, Jason Hewitt. I think, is it at the... uh, 
Museum. <laughs> That's right. It's yes, at the, it's the Museum of Central Lancashire. Yeah, it's at the Museum of Lancashire. Um, we're holding it there because they've got a fantastic location, a Second World War street that sort of shows the, the effects that the Blitz had. Um, so it's actually going to be held on that street, so very atmospheric, um, very much thematically related to the story. And Jason will be there to talk about the book, talk about his experiences as a writer and how he came to get published and to answer any questions that people may have. So it promises to be a fascinating event. Is this his first book? This is his first book. He um, he has written numerous plays, as you, as you said, um, but this is his first published novel. Um, he studied creative writing at Bath University and was quickly snapped up and reading the dynamite room you can easily see why that was yes I've, I've read some of it and i mean some of the uh, credits that he's got superb absorbing suspenseful and with a beautiful poetic touch that's uh, nathan filler and uh, someone else said clever and unsettling this most uncommon in intentional of war stories had me totally gripped so uh, some nice reviews there. And is this the first time something like this has been put on at the museum? No, the museum has held events before. We did an event with um, Sean Wilson, who used to play Martin Platt in Coronation Street, and he had a cookbook oh, out yes, last year. that's right. And so we did a big event around Lancashire foods, and Sean was there talking about his new Northern cookbook, which was, yeah, it was a great event. So are they quite popular events? They are popular, and I think they're, they're getting increasingly popular because reading groups are, are tending to grow up an awful lot more now. People are much more interested in talking about and thinking about books. I think reading used to be something that was quite individual and isolated, and I think now we're finding it's much more of a social activity that brings people together. So events like this a fantastic way of, of creating an insight and a focal point for that. Right. And something I was quite interested in in reading about you is uh, the fact that you regularly review and commentate on children's books and that you've lectured on psychoanalytical approaches to <laughs> children's literature. Ah, psychoanalytical approaches? Yes, psychoanalytical approaches, I suppose, is looking at the deeper underlying psychological messages that come through children's books. Um, you tend to find this a lot in sort of fairy tales, um, that there's an awful lot of coded messages or people say that there are a lot of coded messages around sexuality, around desire, around survival. And so psychoanalytical approaches are ways of sort of looking into those deeper subtext i suppose and at this time in the morning is there is there an example you can give us of what that could be um i suppose an example of what that could be is if you took the chronicles of narnia there's a scene where um, lucy is going into the wardrobe and she's passing through the wardrobe and there are all kinds of fur coats that she passes through and there's a suggestion by some critics that that is meant to be symbolic of a, a movement from sort of innocence through to sexual awakening, I suppose, with the right. sensual side of that. Wow, that's absolutely <laughs> fascinating. I, I mean, for most people, of course, reading the book, there's no way they would probably read that into it, is there? But for others, there would be that psychoanalytical approach in, in reading that book, I take it. That's right. I think literature is capable of sustaining all manner of different interpretations and different views. And I think this is one of the interesting things about reading groups is that it allows everyone from all different backgrounds, all different experience levels, to bring to the table what they feel, what they think, and what they read into these different meanings. And from the work that you do, given the uh, media society that we live in and computers and tablets and everything else... Are children still reading books? I think children do still read books. Um, we're beginning to see um, research showing now that reading on electronic devices, so tablets, mobile phones, computers, is increasing more and more amongst young people. Um, but they still enjoy reading the physical books. There's 
a lot of work that's going on with publishers to create much more of an experience with the physical book. So looking at the way that the format's used, looking at cutouts, looking at illustration, design elements. So you, we're seeing much more exciting books beginning to, to come onto the marketplace as a consequence of that. Right. So are you a Kindle fan or do you still like the feel of the book in your hand? I still personally love the feel of the book in my hand. Um, I tend to read a lot in the bath, and I think if I had my Kindle in the bath, that would be that, really. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is quite fascinating, this, isn't it? Because I do tend to use the Kindle most days uh, at the moment for reading, but I was walking down Fishergate after the programme the other day, and there was a guy stood at the bus stop reading a book, and I thought, well... That's brilliant. <laughs> there was just that kind of, you know, for a moment, the fact he had a book in his hands at the bus stop reading, I just thought, wow, that's great. I want a book. Yeah, I, I think it's still a very different reading experience. And it's it's interesting to see. I mean, I was in London the other day and it used to be the case that you would see people with books and large broadsheet newspapers and they're all there with their Kindles and tablets now. Right. And uh, you said you now work independently? That's right, yes. So what is that role? What What is your role then, Jake? It's a very difficult one to sum up. I do an awful lot of judging of different awards. I review children's books. I put on different events. Um, I'm doing some work at the moment with the National Centre for Children's Books over in Newcastle, putting together a package of um, recommended reads around multiculturalism. So it, it varies a lot, lots of different sort of approaches and techniques but it must be fascinating it is i think that's one of the things i love is that no two days are ever the same and you are based here in preston i'm based here in preston yes i work from home on fishergate hill and and uh being based in preston in preston given the kind of work you do i mean is is it quite easy to work from preston rather than being one of the bigger cities or being london i think it has its benefits and it has some disadvantages. I think one of the disadvantages is that everything does tend to be very London-centric. But I think there are ways that you can use that as an advantage and try to say, well, actually, not much does come up to the north. Preston's on the main line. Why not bring things up north? And that's tending to happen mm. more and more now, which is exciting. Um, and I think one of the big benefits of being in Preston is it's so well-connected. Lovely. Right, well, uh, just remind us then, The Dynamite Room by Jason Hewitt, author and playwright. So it's going to be at the Museum of uh, Lancashire. And again, the dates and times. Yes, it's going to be this Saturday, so Saturday the 5th of April, and it's at 2 o'clock, and we would absolutely love to to welcome people there. Um, fantastic book for reading groups, I think. So, yeah, do and, come along. And if anybody wants to have a look at it online, if you put Jason Hewitt H E W I W T into the search engine, the Dynamite Room. It'll bring it up and you can have a quick look before you go along and meet the author. Jake, been a pleasure meeting you this morning. Can I thank you for coming into the studio? I've uh, loved talking to you. Thank you very much. If you've got news, views, or events you'd like to share with us and the Chat City team, why not give us an email? Chatcity at preston.fm. <laughs>